We got our hands on packets of this dry mixture. According to the person who sent it to us, it contains a bunch of live eggs from different creatures. And now you'll see how in just a few weeks, we literally grew creatures from dry dirt and dust that lived on Earth during the time of the dinosaurs. And they haven't changed at all over hundreds of millions of years. As in most of our videos, we started by building an aquarium. This is already our 10th one, so gluing another glass box from glass scraps was not difficult. In nature, these creatures live in puddles, so to get them to start hatching from their eggs, we need to place them in almost distilled water, meaning rainwater or melted snow. We had to melt some snow from outside and pour it into our new aquarium. Puddles are usually not deep, so here we made the water level about 2 centimeters. It was time to pour in the mixture from the packet, and this mixture was so dry and old that it felt like it was actually older than the dinosaurs. We really didn't believe that there could be any eggs in it, and if there were, they were probably already dried up and dead. Nevertheless, we poured all the contents of the packet into our puddle. Some particles immediately sank to the bottom, while others remained floating on the surface. We decided not to remove what was left floating on top since all the eggs could be there. We turned off the light and left. Two nights later, I saw the aquarium. It was empty hours ago, but now had at least a hundred translucent crustaceans. Some moved along the bottom and walls, others swam like fish. In the aquarium that had been empty just a few hours ago, there were now what seemed to be at least a hundred different translucent crustaceans swimming around. Some of them were moving along the bottom and the walls, while others were swimming like little fish in the water. The third ones were doing something really strange. These little crustaceans urgently needed to be fed, but with what? After all, they were no bigger than poppy seeds, which means their mouths were tiny. We realized that they wouldn't be able to swallow anything larger than dissolved yeast in water. After all, they were no bigger than poppy seeds, which means their mouths were tiny. We realized that they wouldn't be able to swallow anything larger than dissolved yeast in water. We soaked some culinary yeast in boiling water so they wouldn't start multiplying and spoil the water. We ended up with a suspension that looked like diluted milk. We used a pipette to drop this mixture into the aquarium. And now there are a bunch of suspended particles that our pets will be able to eat without any trouble. They're still silly and inattentive, so for them to survive, the food has to float right in front of their eyes. But despite the fact that they now have plenty of food in such a small volume of water, it will be quite cramped for them, and they will definitely start hunting each other. It was decided to separate these creatures into two different aquariums. They are still so small that they easily fit into pipettes or even in a tiny drop of water. By the way, while relocating all these uniform mysterious little crustaceans, we saw the ones for whom this experiment was started. This is a horseshoe crab and it's a true living fossil. Right now it's hard to see it in detail so first we need to grow it and then we can talk more about what kind of dinosaur it is. The fact that we were able to recognize the water fleas among other small crustaceans meant that they had already grown quite a bit and it was time to switch to a different type of food. These will be microorganisms that will multiply on pieces of plant matter, to put it simply, we threw very small pieces of carrot into the aquarium and various microscopic creatures began to eat them. And it will be our little ones that will be feeding on them, but rotting vegetables in such a small volume of water can easily turn it into a deadly swamp and kill all our pets. It would be logical to take and dilute this water with pure water and increase the volume, but it's not that simple. The thing is, brine shrimp, which belong to this order, are very sensitive to changes in the chemical composition of the water and especially to its temperature. That is, if we suddenly add fresh water, which will be a couple of degrees different from the one in which they live, then our entire population of crayfish will simply precipitate. Well, I mean, they'll die. So we started adding water literally drop by drop, very, very slowly. So slowly that in a week, the volume could be increased by a maximum of two times. By the way, in the future, these prehysterical crayfish will live in our large aqua terrarium. So we added water specifically from there so they could get used to the chemical composition of that water and to avoid standing by the aquarium with a pipette all the time, we made the process of adding fresh water automatic. For the next six days, water continued to drip into the aquarium and we continued to feed the crustaceans carrots. And while during this time the regular crustaceans only grew slightly, water fleas grew so much that you could already distinguish their individual legs and big black eyes. They look like they've grown at least 20 times in length. So in terms of mass that means they increased in volume by 8000 times. So that means they're eating thousands of times more now. It was no longer possible to feed such a huge crustacean with some rotten vegetables. And that's why we decided to switch to animal protein, meaning meat. This is chicken breast. We cut it into very small pieces because meat is not only more nutritious than vegetables, but it can also spoil the water much more. We rinsed the pieces of filet in water and slightly crushed them so they would be bigger and softer. 
That should be enough for our four water fleas for about a day. But what happened to the other little crustaceans, you might ask? The fact is that shieldfish grow many times faster than all the other rhinoceros. It lived in this aquarium, and as they grew bigger and stronger, they just hunted the little ones until they ate all of them, except for their own kind. We didn't want them to eat each other, so besides chicken, we decided to give them food that they sometimes find in nature. This is bloodworm, the larvae of mosquitoes that live in lakes, ponds, and sometimes even in puddles. We bought it as food for aquarium fish at the pet store. A few little worms in different corners of the aquarium and our pets are definitely well fed. But even an abundance of food may not stop them from trying to eat their own kind. So, to give the shield bugs a place to hide from each other, we bought this piece of hornwort and placed its pieces in both aquariums. And just two days later, feeding on this food, the shield bugs grew about one and a half times larger. Just look at these monsters! Their antennae and countless legs were already visible to the naked eye and their shell had stopped being transparent and taken on a greenish tint. In general, fish, or in our case crustaceans, always grow larger if they live in a large volume of water. The shield bugs were still too small for our large aqua terrarium, and we remembered that we had an unused aquarium where our water beetle lived. Be sure to watch this video if you haven't seen it yet. And if you've already seen it, then you remember that we released the beetle into freedom. And now, its aquarium will serve as a home for these prehistoric creatures. While the aquarium was sitting unused, all the plants in it rotted and turned into a layer of sludge, which has now risen and is floating in the water. We decided to lightly filter the water, and at the same time oxygenate it. In just 10 minutes, it became much cleaner, and we could already relocate the shield bugs to their new apartments. But as soon as we prepared everything for the relocation, we saw this picture. Pale, lifeless bodies of shield bugs were floating upside down. Wait, here they are. Completely alive shield bugs. But then what are these translucent, ghostly bodies? The thing is, crustaceans have their skeletons on the outside of their bodies, not inside like we do. And every time the little crustacean grows, it sheds its old shell. Realizing that they were all fine, we started the relocation. But we couldn't just move them to the new aquarium. You remember what I said about their sensitivity to temperature changes, right? The water needed to equalize in temperature and chemical composition. To do this, we slowly started pouring water from the big aquarium into the container where our little crustaceans were sitting. At first, we used a pipette to add a few drops, and then we scooped up the new water with our hands. This process took about 15 minutes, and we didn't want to rush and accidentally kill these nearly two-week-old shield bugs. When the container was already full and the shield bugs were still alive, we carefully submerged it, and after a few seconds, the bravest shield bug was already in the new water. And behind him, two others swam out to their new home, who had lived with him. The fourth one was still sitting alone in the aquarium we set up at the beginning. Once in the new artificial puddle, the shield bugs were just amazed by the amount of sand that was here. And the first thing they started doing was digging through the sand and silt that had accumulated while the aquarium was sitting idle. They were digging non-stop. As we learned, by passing the substrate through themselves, they eat the bacteria that have multiplied on it. Along with the water from the old aquarium, their shed chitinous exoskeletons also made it to their new home. In general, shrimp usually eat their old shells, thus replenishing the chitin supplies they use to create a new one. That's probably why we didn't see them before. But while three barnacles were having fun with the sand in the big aquarium, we noticed something strange in the first one. Something very small was wriggling under a thin layer of dirt. It was a pink creature that resembled a bivalve shell. But can shellfish really be so active in the substrate? And they shouldn't really have distinct black eyes. When this inconspicuous inhabitant of our puddle emerged from the ground, it became clear that it looked exactly like a shrimp wearing a bivalve shell. Suddenly it shot up and went about its business. From the experts, we learned that this little crustacean is called Leptosteria. Suddenly, he suddenly surfaced and went about his business. We learned from experts that this crustacean is called Leptosteria. And this shrimp mollusk lived on Earth during the Devonian period, which is about 400 million years ago, almost twice as long ago as barnacles. By the way, how are they doing? In the first aquarium, this giant continued to eat and grow alongside the Leptosterias. Fifteen days have passed since hatching, and now he was feeling great, with his body measuring about one and a half centimeters in length. But things weren't going so well in the new aquarium. One day, we noticed that one barnacle was missing, and after searching the entire aquarium, we realized that it had, so to speak, eaten its fill and was sleeping. We don't know what it could have died from because everything was fine just yesterday. The only thing that set him apart from his relatives was his small size. He had been growing slowly in the last few days and was noticeably smaller than the other barnacles. We decided to return its body to the aquarium, hoping that it would serve as food for the bacteria, which would then be eaten by the live barnacles. 
Or maybe it's this little snail. Somehow it ended up in our aquarium. Probably along with the plants we bought for its setup. When the barnacles were over 20 days old, we realized that they had now reached their normal size. And how did we figure that out? The thing is, we noticed two small sacks with eggs under the back part of the shell of one of them. And it was that barnacle that lived alone. Well, almost alone. But if it lived alone, where did the eggs come from? The thing is, it's not a he, it's a she. Almost all barnacles are females, and even when they are alone, they can still lay eggs. After the eggs develop enough, the barnacles bury them in the sand. And basically, after that, the population of barnacles can die out. The puddle they live in will dry up sooner or later, and the laid eggs will remain in the ground and hatch with the next rain. The barnacles in another aquarium also had eggs, and they were about 3 centimeters long. Of course, there are barnacles that can grow up to 10 centimeters, but even such a result made us very happy. Especially if you remember that 20 days ago, they would all easily fit in a drop of water. By the way, while observing the barnacles, we noticed that sometimes they float on the surface of the water with their bellies up. The best explanation we could find is that they do this out of habit. Because when they were very small, they used this method to eat bacteria that accumulated at the surface of the water. But for adult shieldfish, this behavior is very stupid, because by showing off their red belly, they can become easy prey for birds, which sometimes eat them. Although, if these creatures, unlike dinosaurs, were able to survive to this day, then they are probably doing everything right. Now that the shieldfish and leptisteria have grown to impressive sizes, we decided that it was time to place them in our large aquarium. The water in it was exactly the same as the water in the small aquarium, so we just took a mug and dragged all the crustaceans there. There's even more sand and silt in there, not to mention the driftwood, which is always home to loads of bacteria. And yes, we have two leptesterids, it's just that we couldn't catch them both in the frame at the same time because they're too small and fast. And of course, we didn't forget about the snail either. And yes, we have two leptesterids, it's just that we couldn't catch them both in the frame at the same time because they're too small and fast. And of course, we didn't forget about the snail. By the way, it was only during the editing that I noticed there was a little flying fish next to it. And I didn't scoop him up with a spoon. I went to check if he was still there, and it turned out there were 14 of those flying fish. And they are all now in the big aquarium. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. This video turned out to be the longest of all on our channel. And if you felt it was too long, please let us know in the comments. Well, if you found everything interesting, give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then there will be even more videos like this.